The fill light can be bright, dark, or gone completely. It depends on the overall contrast level you're aiming for. The way we control the fill light strength in our scene is on location light offered by the HDRI environment. So to tweak it, uh, let's head over to the HDRI collection, click on the sphere, then Shift F3 to enter the material editor. And here we have our first emission shader with the HDRI plugged in. We can make our fill light strong enough to virtually eliminate all the shadows, or it can be nearly non-existent to create dramatic contrast. Or actually any stop in between these two flags. Given that we have a pretty non-uniform HDR panorama working as our fill light, it still has a bit of sourceness about it. It's still not totally ambient and definitely has some interest about it. So the fill light sometimes uh, can have its own features and even though its function seems to be purely supportive and secondary, it's also part of lighting and it's good to have something like an HDRI to fill in our shadows. I wonder if you agree, uh, it even looks fairly interesting on its own. Could definitely work in, in some cases. But let's not, not subvert our expectations too much. So here I'm reverting to a more uh, dramatic contrast ratio between key and fill, something like 15 to 1 approximately. Choosing the contrast ratio is one of the most obvious creative choices with the direct consequences. It is a fairly basic difference between the high key look with the shadows blown out of the image. Let's say the contrast ratio of 2 to 1 in between the key and fill. And then we have a choice of more and more dramatic contrast ratios, to the point of chiaroscuro, an Italian term literally meaning light dark. What is important is to be able to control the fill light amount. And aside from using the HDRI environments and ambient light in general, there are different methods of controlling the fill light, for example utilizing light bounces or using reflectors. The concept of bouncing back a part of light utilizing reflectors and just any kind of bounce panels to fill in shadows is yet another concept from filmmaking that can be recreated in computer graphics thanks to light transport capabilities of modern ray tracing render engines such as Cycles. It would be a shame not to give it a try, right? And that approach is slightly different from just using ambient light. So uh, let's create a new collection called fill underscore zero one and add in our plain companion. Fill lights are usually placed at the complementary angles to the key light, uh, but actually it can be done in many different ways. For example, we can place it directly opposite to the shadow side, making it a light sandwich technically. Say, if we want it to bounce back uh, some of the intensity generated by the key. So I'm assigning it a new material called bounce, and then obviously renaming the object itself. And then we have to tweak the base color or albedo to control the amount of light bounced back or specular component can also have some influence so let's not forget about it but the base color is by far the most important one the darker colors absorb light turning it into a negative fill technically while the brighter colors bounce it back efficiently one of the blessings of computer graphics is that we can utilize non-physically correct values, like bouncing back more light than hit the object. We can input there any kind of value, like 2 or 4 or more. And it will make this bounce panel material break all the rules of energy conservation of this universe and stuff like that. It will turn it into a pretty supernatural bounce panel. Almost a light source in itself. And then it becomes a matter of finding the right size and right placement for our bounce. Where do we want to shovel the level from the key light? Uh, I'm not so sure about bouncing back as much light for the time being though. Allow me to reset its value back to 1 and you know what, let's put this layer on hold temporarily as our HDRI fills in the shadow side quite efficiently, at least at this stage of the workflow. Okay, before wrapping this mini section up, there are a few things worth mentioning. There are a few things that I found interesting when analyzing the use of bounce panels in film production. 
So well, let's say the level is shoveled from this direction and it is a fairly hot light source with a nice definition in the way it sculpts the geometry and stuff like that. The beam doesn't reach the left side at all though. We can keep it like that and call it Chiara Scuro or place the bounce on the left side, on the side which is complementary to the key light, and just throw some level back making it a light sandwich. But then we could bounce it back at a similar angle to our main light, roughly from the same side, so it bounces back like that and gently wraps around the model, kind of filling in this way, gradually falling into darkness. So when it comes to bouncing back the key light, there are many different ways of doing it. I think that's pretty interesting. Another super cool thing about doing it in cycles is that the amount of bounced level is always in proportion to the amount of the key level, always keeping the proportion natural. This way you just don't have to care about balancing the ratios and that jazz. That's a cool little thing I thought is worth mentioning as well. Yet another technique from filmmaking that I think is definitely worth knowing is the concept of negative fill. Sometimes the motivation for using a panel is not to add light but to remove it, bringing the shadows down and increasing the contrast. Like, oh, we have too much light on location. Quickly, let's do something about it. Place a 4x4 neck here to get a nice deep shadow on the face or something. Here I set up a brightly lit scene with a high key HDRI lighting to demo this concept really quickly. So let's imagine that the contrast ratio is a bit too low for the mood we are aiming for. And here it is actually much easier to remove some ambient light rather than unpack the extra lamps and mess with the HDRI. Then we would need a plane and we need to place it where we want to reduce the amount of ambience. Usually the light coming in from the camera direction is the most unwanted because it flattens everything too much. So usually the neg stands right behind the camera or something. I'm giving it a new material. Fill underscore negative. It is gonna be a 0% albedo, a pure black color absorbing all rays that hit it. The specular component goes down to 0, 2 just in case to avoid any light rays escaping. Uh, then scaling this neg affects how much ambience do we want to absorb from that direction. Notice the contrast levels going up and down. That's pretty cool. And then again the amount of the surface reflectance or its base color can be used as a slider controlling the contrast ratio of this set. If one negative bounce isn't enough more can be added to form a book-shaped or V-shaped corner, effectively cutting the fill light from this general direction all at once, for example. The point being, instead of adding extra lights to shape the contrast, we negate the parasitic fill instead, to boost the directionality and drama of our lighting setup, if that makes sense. I think it's very interesting indeed. As usual, I'm gonna show a quick comparison as a cherry on top so there is our test scene with lots of ambient light, here we applied a negative fill, and even more negative fill. To make it dramatic. 